Josephine's Restaurant and Catering. We offer lutong bahay Filipino dishes and desserts. Try our crispy pata, lumpiang Shanghai, pancit palabo, relyenong manok, and many more. We serve halo-halo, leche flan, and other traditional Filipino desserts. For events and special occasions, Josephine's also offers catering services and takeout party trays. For authentic Filipino cuisine and true Pinoy taste, try Josephine's Restaurant and Catering. 2650 Main Street in Vancouver. Balitang Vancouver is brought to you by Brayfort Media Group. Hello mga kabayan! Narito na naman ang mga pangunahing balita sa ating komunidad. Mga maiinit na isyo na puno ng kontrobersiya at mga balitang dapat ninyong subaybayan ang hatid ng Balitang Vancouver para sa inyong lahat sa linggong ito. Ito ang boses ng mga Pinoy sa Vancouver. Ako po, si Elizar Oxena. Dala namin ang mga balitang dapat ninyong malaman at mga pangyayaring maaaring dumikit sa inyong mga isipan. Ako po, si Angel Garcia. Ito, Ito ang Balitang, Balitang Vancouver. Para sa Balitang Vancouver ngayon, Multicultural Helping House Society, sinagot ng mga batikos at mga aligasyon ni Freddy Baguno. State-of-the-art facilities ng Surrey Memorial Hospital, opisyal nang binuksan sa publiko. HIV cases sa British Columbia, kontrolado na ayon sa Ministry of Health. Multicultural Helping House Society, sinagot ang lahat ng mga aligasyon at batikos na ibinato sa kanila ni Freddy Baguno na may kaugnayan sa eleksyon ng Board of Directors na ginanap noong nagkarang buwan ng Mayo. Narito ang exclusive interview ng Balitang Vancouver. May kaugnayan sa isyo at mga reklamong ipinabot sa media ni Freddy Baguno noong mga nakaraang linggo laban sa Multicultural Helping House Society may kaugnayan sa di umano mga anomalyang naganap noong nakarang eleksyon ng MHHS Board of Directors. Nakapanayam ng Balitang Vancouver ang presidente ng nasabing organisasyon na si Tom Avindano o kilala bilang Tatay Tom sa karamihan upang magbigay linaw at sagutin ang lahat ng mga aligasyong ibinabato laban sa kanila. Pakinggan natin ang panig ng Multicultural Helping House Society sa aming exclusive interview. Hello mga kabayan, narito tayo ngayon sa tanggapan ng uh, Multicultural Helping House Society upang makapanayam si Tatay Tom, ang presidente ng naturang uh, organisasyon. Tatay Tom, welcome to Balitang Vancouver. Thank, thank you for having me, okay, and uh, welcome to the Multicultural Helping House Society. Thank you so much for allowing us to have this interview with you today. Me too, yeah, thank you. Um, I'll go straight to the questions na... Uh, ito ay may kaugnayan sa mga aligasyong ibinato sa uh, Multicultural Helping House Society ni Freddy Baguno um, based on our episode last week sa Balitang Vancouver. Um, yung first na allegation is about um, Freddy Baguno was claiming that uh, the election committee was uh, created and it was just a handpick composed of about 15 people. And uh, therefore, he considers this to be um, an illegitimate committee. What is your statement? The committee on election is composed of five people. Kaya, this was elected by the assembly that was called for May 2nd. Kaya hindi tama yung sinabi nga na handpick dahil na elected sila by the assembly called for that purpose. So, wrong. Mm -hmm. But according to him, uh, wala daw siya natanggap na, na letter or communication galing sa corporate secretary na there is going to have a general assembly. Wala siya natanggap sulat. Then that is, that is uh, maybe a miscommunication na dahil na nagpadala kami ng sulat sa kanya. Pero okay. galing ang sinabi niya na hindi na galing sa secretary kung hindi na galing sa opisina ng Multicultural mm -hmm. Helping House. In any way, Natanggap niya ang notice. 
-hmm. Pero hindi sila nagpunta sa meeting. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to point that out, the uh, point of order. Pero according to him, he was not listened to. Instead, he was ejected and uh, was shut up. He was ordered to leave uh, the board. Alam niyo, nandun ako eh, sa likod lang ako. Because after the general meeting ng board of directors, ay binigay namin ang chair sa members of the COMELEC to, to proceed with the election. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, nandun ako sa likod at uh, immediately upon na nag-open na yung COMELEC to open mm -hmm. the process, tumayo si Mr. Bagono. Mm -hmm. Sabi niya po ito border. Mm -hmm. ang, pagkatapos, sinabi niya na handpick yung, yung mga committee. Well, I think, hindi yan po ito border. That is already a, a a what we call a call for questioning about the legality of the COMELEC itself. Wala na pakialam ang COMELEC doon nung na sila and they were elected by the, by, the, by the assembly. So the point of order is not there. Mm -hmm. The point of order is not on the proceeding but on the composition of the COMELEC which is not a point of order. He also claimed that the nominating committee is just a rubber stump because uh, the dominees did not actually come from uh, the general members of the assembly and uh, um, you tried to point out that there was a meeting actually. Wrong. Dahil na yung a candidates for the board of members came from the grassroots, from the membership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, paano mo masasabi na handpick yun? Again, the, the information uh, needs to be clarified and I think Mr. Baguno should do his, his homework. He also claimed na some of those elected uh, members of the board are not qualified. What is your statement to this? Mali. Wrong again. Because the candidates were screened by the members of the nominating committee. And all the documentations were forwarded to them. Mm -hmm. And anybody who is not qualified, mm -hmm. according to the criteria established by the board, mm -hmm. uh, can be rejected by the nominating committee. And the fact that all the candidates were certified by the nominating committee as qualified, then they are qualified. Mr. Baguno also claimed that there seemed to be misusing of power in the organization right here at Multicultural Helping House Society. That is subject to uh, interpretation on his part. Mm -hmm. On our part, we are all here serving the community and serving the Multicultural Helping House according to its mission and vision. Now, uh, when it comes to that abuse of power, I do not know what he meant by abuse of power. We are doing this, we are what we call the, uh, guided by the Constitution, guided by the uh, principles that the government is supporting us. We are mm -hmm. funded by the government mm -hmm. and therefore we cannot just do anything against the law. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think he was trying to emphasize um, the requirement that's set by um, uh, the leaders of this organization, particularly on the qualification of those who wants, of those who want to run for office, like uh, according to your requirement, there is a need for a certain candidate first to be a member, um, a, a, a member of this organization, and someone who has volunteered for at least two years. Whereas in the Constitution and bylaws, the requirement is just 15 days of membership. Then the one that person could already be a legitimate candidate or, um, you know, uh, can already be qualified to run for office of the Board of Directors. You know, that criteria was not only established this year. That criteria was already in place since 2006. Mm -hmm. And that was in practice since then until now. This year, it was uh, implemented again and again, every year we implement this criteria. And um, for anyone who would say that it is not within our power to establish criteria is again an ignorance of the duty of the board of directors because the board of directors duty is to protect mm -hmm. and to establish criteria for those to who will be succeeding them in the next election. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're trying to say that uh, the two-year membership requirement is legitimate. Legitimate, very legitimate because that is the duty of the board of members. Therefore, a, a, a member of the organization who just arrived like a month ago 
cannot qualify to run for an office in this organization. They just arrived. If they just arrived a month ago, cannot. They cannot be. They had to know the the uh, the multicultural helping house. They have to volunteer precisely because they have to know the in and out, the working mm -hmm. of the multicultural helping house, how they are, how the services are delivered, how the money is spent, and how the the entire building is uh, managed. Because this is not a small house, this is a building and we are operating like a corporate, mm -hmm. like a corporate organization. So it, everything is in order. In, in the allegation that we are misusing power, I think that is wrong. That is, again, depending on the person saying that one, because we have never abused power here, because there is, we do not receive salary here. There is nothing in here except service. Mm -hmm. Nobody can claim that they love so much of the multicultural helping house if you malign the integrity of this building. Because this building is a legacy, is testimony that all who are within this building, all who serve this building, all the board members and supporters of this building are devoted to the cause of the multicultural helping house society. Mr. Mr. Baguno was actually claiming that if there is one person who is most qualified to run for office, that's him. I mean, well, what's I your statement? Think, yeah, I think uh, that is, he is entitled to his opinion. Mm -hmm. This is a free country. You can even claim to be prime minister. You would say, okay, I am better qualified than prime minister. You be anybody. But I would not think, mm -hmm. to, I would not say, that uh, anyone who would wish is already eligible to serve. Serve first, and then we will know how you serve. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Baguna was also trying to say that uh, there are already, already a lot of people who are not satisfied with uh, how the organization, the Multicultural Helping House Society, is being managed. Um, what is your comment on this? Well, maybe he is talking to people because, you know, in service like this, you cannot please everybody. Mm -hmm. You do 10 good things and one thing that they do not like, you are not good anymore. So uh, I would say that uh, just come and volunteer first. Mm -hmm. Then let's work together because there is nothing in here. There is no benefit in here. There is no fame in here. There is no nothing in here except what Mr. Bagono was telling to pitch to us. Mm -hmm. Serve with humility, with love. We are doing that long time ago. Otherwise, there is no building like this. Mm -hmm. So to question the integrity of the leadership of this multicultural helping house, for a person, I would suggest they look at themselves first. Look at their accomplishment for themselves as a leader of their own community and then judge us here. Mm -hmm. what, are we, what they were doing before, what they are doing now, and what we were doing before, and what we are doing now. From the very start of this uh, society, I, have, I was at it already. I was one of the founders. I do not claim to be only one. Mm -hmm. Of the founder, this was founded by ten members of the family mm -hmm. uh, that grouped together to serve the community, and then we expanded to a larger one, and then we have the multicultural helping house society. We started as a Filipino Canadian support service, but we expanded to the multicultural helping house society to cover mm -hmm. the, all the immigrants coming from different uh, parts of the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we are. I know that we are, we need more to improve ourselves. Day by day, we have to learn to improve our services. And now we are glad that there are so many suggestions coming in. And I would welcome anyone outside of this multicultural living house, give your suggestion to us in writing, mm -hmm. and not through the newspapers, not through something that I would say it has a malicious content. Mm -hmm. that is more of degrading 
the society, the society that stands the pride of the Filipino people. I believe in myself, in my heart, that the Multicultural Helping House Society is the pride of the Filipino people. And as a Filipino, you have to first examine, look at yourself, help, and but not to outright to be judgmental to people who are serving here for the love of the community. Tatay Tom, if uh, Mr. Freddy Baguno is watching our uh, program right now, what is your message to him? My message to him, come, you are most welcome. Come and help us. Uh, we need you. We need people who are brainy, who are intelligent, who are dedicated, who are humble in their service, who love the community, everything that is what we need in a multicultural helping our society. So Mr. Baguno is most welcome. Just come here, see me, and I will help him to fill up a volunteer form because we have a volunteer form because all our volunteers are now classified according to their expertise. And we professionalize our volunteer. And so Mr. Bagono is expert of many things, then you are most welcome, Mr. Bagono. Tatay Tom, in conclusion, uh, do you have special announcement for the Filipino community? Well, yes, I, uh, the, uh, the uh, foundation that we have now here has raised 18,000 last uh, May 26 for our fundraising, for our launching. And that is for the scholarship mostly, to offer scholar for Filipinos who are deserving, for immigrants who are deserving, and for the living caregivers, and also for those brilliant Filipinos who would like to go to the university. We have this opportunity now to send our good people to earn their education in Canada through scholarship. That is Tatay Tom's scholarship. That's great. Congratulations. So, Tatay Tom, thank you so much for allowing Baladang Vancouver to have an, an interview with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so yes. much for having me, and uh, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah you come. It's, it's an honor to be here. I would be very happy to welcome you again. Philippine Independence Day celebrations in New York tampok sa travel documentary report ni Charlene Ocampo. Samahan natin si Lakwacherang Dora ng Balitang Vancouver sa kanyang masayang adventure sa U.S. Isang malaking parada para sa 116 Philippine Independence Day celebration ang matagumpay na ginanap dito sa New York noong nakaraang June 1. Ito ay ginanap sa 38th Street hanggang 23rd Street at Madison Avenue na dinaluhan ng humigit kumulang isang daang libong mga Pinoy ay Filipino Americans at nahalos dalawang daang mga Filipino American profit and non-profit organizations galing sa New York at Northeast Region. Ang parade ay inorganisa ng Philippine Independence Day Council Incorporated or PIDCI, isang non-profit organization na kilalang organizer ng pinakamalaking Philippine Independence Day Parade sa labas ng Pilipinas. Pundong finansyal, para sa mga child care providers dito sa British Columbia, handa nang ipamahagi ng gobyerno sa mga interesadong aplikante. 
Kung kayo ay interesado sa ganitong programa, alamin ang mga detalye sa report na ito. Isang magandang balita para sa mga child care providers sa buong probinsya ng British Columbia. Ang gobyerno ng BC ay naglaanan ng $14.8 million na pondong finansyal upang ibahagi sa mga interesado mga child care providers para magpatayo ng mga bagong lisensyadong child care spaces sa mga lugar na kulang sa nasabing mga facilities gaya ng Surrey, Abbotsford at Langley para sa susunod na pasukan. Sa programang ito, ang mga non-profit child care providers ay maaaring makapag-apply para sa pondong finansyal hanggang $500,000. Samantalang ang mga private child care organizations naman ay maaaring mabigyan ng pondong aabot hanggang $250,000. Ang perang ibibigay ng gobyerno ay nakalaan para gamitin pang tostos para i-improve o i-renovate ang mga existing child care facilities, pagbili ng lupa para sa mga bagong child care site, pagpapatayo ng mga bagong building, pambili ng mga learning materials, pagpapagawa ng mga playground facilities at equipment, at iba pang mga gamit na kakailanganin ng mga bata sa mga nasabing facilities. Ang applications para dito ay maaari ng isumiti mula May 2 hanggang June 30, 2014, September 1 hanggang October 3, 2014, at February 1 hanggang March 31, 2015 sa tanggapan ng Ministry of Children and Family Development. Para sa karagdagang impormasyon, tumawag lamang sa 250-356-2939. Ministry of Education may mensahe para sa mga magulang at mga estudyante ng apektado sa malawakang pagwewelga ng mga guro sa British Columbia. Ating alamin sa report na ito. Dahil sa malawakang pagwewelga ng mga guro sa British Columbia, inaasahang maapektuhan ang mga nakatakdang school program of activities, lalong-lalo na ang mga examination periods, pagmamarka sa mga test papers, paggawa ng mga report cards, pagbigay ng final course grades at iba pang mga paperworks para sa school year na ito. Ayon sa Ministry of Education, dahil sa patuloy na malawaking strike ng mga miyembro ng BC Teachers Federation, inaasahan ding maapiktuhan ang mga preparasyon at mga school activities para sa darating na summer. Dagdag pa ng naturang tanggapan, tuloy pa rin ang provincial examinations para sa grades 10, 11, and 12 sa nakatakdang schedules. Sa mga liblib na lugar sa probinsya, Ang school bus services ay patuloy din sa pagserbisyo sa mga estudyante sa araw ng examinations. Ang official transcript of records ng mga estudyante ay nakatakda pa rin ipamimigay sa mga magulang at estudyante sa katapusan ng buwan ng Hulyo sa nakasanayang schedule. Para sa karagdagang impormasyon at mga updates, may kaugnayan sa Teachers Bargaining with BC Government, bisitahin lamang ang website ng Ministry of Education sa www.newsroom.gov.bc.ca o maglagon sa www.bcpsea.bc.ca para sa bargaining positions at strike impacts ng mga guro. State-of-the-art hospital facilities, opisyal ng binuksan ng Ministry of Health para sa publiko. Ito ay matatagpuan sa Surrey Memorial Hospital. Opisyal nang binuksan sa publiko ang bagong struktura na tinatawag na Critical Care Tower sa Surrey Memorial Hospital. Ang programa ay pinangunahan ni Health Minister Terry Lake kasama ang iba pang mga opisyal ng gobyerno ng BC, mga representatives ng Fraser Health at mga kumakatawan sa Surrey Memorial Hospital Foundation. Ang proyektong ito ay bahagi ng $512 million na budget ng gobyerno para sa redevelopment and expansion project ng nasabing hospital. Ang bagong 8-story tower ay paglalagyan ng dagdag na 151 beds para sa Surrey Memorial Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, Expanded Stroke and Intensive Care Unit at iba pang mga state-of-the-art hospital facilities. Dito rin matatagpuan ang modernong hospital laboratory na gumagamit ng robotics at automated technology at ang pinakaunang neonatal and pediatric pharmacy dito sa Canada. Ayon sa report, ang naturang departamento ay magdadagdag ng 650 direct care staff at hihigit sa 300 clinical support staff na mag-aalaga sa mga ina at mga sanggol na bagong panganak at iba pang mga pasyenteng dadalhin at gagamutin dito. Dagdag pa sa report na ang University of British Columbia Faculty of Medicine ay dito na rin ibabase bilang kaakibat ng Surrey Memorial Hospital sa kanilang academic clinical campus. 
AIDS cases sa British Columbia. Unti-unti na ang nawawala matapos ang halos labindalawang taong pakikipaglaban ng probinsya sa sakit na ito. Ayon sa BC Center for Excellence in HIV and AIDS. Sa kabila ng mabilis na paglaganap ng HIV at AIDS cases sa Pilipinas nitong mga nakarang buwan, taliwas naman na naging resulta ng epidemyang ito sa British Columbia. Ayon sa report ng BC Center for Excellence in HIV at AIDS, tumigil na ang pagdagsa ng mga pasyenteng may AIDS sa probinsya matapos ang halos labing dalawang taong pakikipaglaban ng Ministry of Health sa sakit na ito. Kumpara noong 1997, kung saan halos araw-araw ay may namamatay sa sakit na ito, sa ngayon daw ang sakit na ito ay tuluyan ang nakontrola ng gobyerno ng British Columbia. Sa katunayan, ang dating hospital ward ng St. Paul sa BC na naging eksklusibo lamang para sa mga pasyenteng may HIV at AIDS na binuksan noong February 1997 ay sa ngayon isasarado na. Ayon sa deklarasyon ni Premier Christy Clark nitong nakarang buwan, nagpapatunay lamang di umano na ang sakit na AIDS ay kontrolado na sa ngayon dito sa British Columbia. Dagdag pa sa balita, wala na mga kasong naitala pa. na may mga pasyenteng na diagnose na may AIDS dito sa BC simula noong nakarang taon kung saan apat na pung kaso lamang ng mga pasyenteng may AIDS ang naitala sa British Columbia. Maliban dito, wala nang naidagdag pa sa listahan ng mga pasyenteng ito. Sa ngayon, mahigpit naman na tinututukan ng gobyerno ang pagaling ng mga pasyenteng ito hanggang sa tuluyan ang mabura sa isipan at realidad ang sakit na HIV at AIDS sa British Columbia. At dito naman po nagtatapos ang Balitang Vancouver para sa lingkong ito. Kung kayo ay may mga komento, isyo o balitang naisibahagi sa aming programa, ang Balitang Vancouver ay bukas para sa inyong lahat. Maaaring mag-email lamang po sa balitangvancouver at gmail.com o tumawag sa 604-588-6397. Sana'y naging bahagi na naman kami ng inyong masayang araw at masaganang linggo. Mabuhay tayong mga Pilipino sa Canada. Ako po si Lazar Oxena. Ako naman po si Angel Garcia. Ito, Ito ang, ang Balitang, Balitang Vancouver. Vancouver.